.NET for Devices presents Even Tiles Part 19 Push Notifications So hello once again. Today we're going to talk about push notifications or to be more specific about tile notifications. In the previous episode we already saw that a 256 megabyte device does not have background or periodic tasks but you can still change the content of a secondary tile by making use of push notifications and that's what we're going to do right now. So to begin with I'm going to open my app.xaml.cs file and I'm just going to add an application setting there to indicate whether or not we are currently making use of push notifications. So the first thing we're going to do is declare a new key and we're going to call that key key life tile notifications and I'm just going to give it an appropriate key entry there and it's going to be part of our application setting so it's the key under which we store this particular application setting I'm also going to declare a public static boolean property and this property we're going to call that get life tile notifications And then the next thing we need to do is make sure that we check whether or not that application setting is currently available. So what I'm going to do is I'm quickly going to go to my constructor to initialize that application setting to false. This is not really necessary, but I like to, you know, like explicitly uh, set my variables. And then the next thing we're going to do if our application is launching, we're going to verify whether or not this application setting exists. So if the application setting with that key that we just created being the key lifetime notification, if that exists, then we're going to assign our property that we just created to the value that is available inside that particular application setting. And if it's not existing, well then we initialize it to false in the constructor of our application. And I'm just going to make sure that I cast it to a boolean. Now the next thing we need to do is make sure that that application setting containing our key lifetime notifications is stored when the application is deactivated or when it's going to the background, but also that that same value is stored when the application is closing. Now the next thing we're going to do is actually implement functionality for our push notifications and for that I'm going to create a new class. I'm going to call that class tile notifications. And here is that new class and we're just going to add some functionality there. Let me just start by declaring a string that will hold the name of our tile notification channel and we're going to call that our even tiles channel. Then the next thing I'm going to do is create a public method returning nothing. I'm going to call that method setupChannel. And it does not accept any parameters either. And inside that method, what we're going to do is check if we currently have a HTTP notification channel available. And what that means is that, hey, we already signed up for push notifications. If so, we will find a valid push channel. If not, we're going to create a valid notification channel. And we just do so by finding our channel, so the channel that we named, and we should get a push channel back. If we get a push channel back, then we already have notifications enabled inside our application. But let's first check if we don't have push channels enabled. Well, the thing we're going to do then is create a new instance of the HTTP notification channel object. We're going to pass our own name for our notification channel. And then we're going to hook up to a couple of event handlers because through event handlers we will get information from that push channel. And now the first thing we need is a URI and we're going to use that URI to pass push notifications to the Microsoft push notification server and that URI is unique for a device and we get that through that channel URI updated event handler. 
Also, if errors occur, we will be informed through another event handler, because the error occurred event will be raised. So we are hooking up to that one too. And then we're just going to open our push channel. And finally, we're going to tell that we are interested in tile notifications. So each time we are sending a tile notification from inside a server to that unique channel URI, then if our application is not running, our live tile will be updated. Now, if we already have a push channel available, then the only thing we need to do, since apparently we restarted the application, it's just assigning the push channel events to our event handlers. And the other thing we need to do if we already have a channel available is pass the URI and we're going to do that in the output window of Visual Studio right now so we can copy that URI and uh, use it in an ASP.NET test application that I'm going to show you later. And that URI is just available in the channel URI property of our just opened push channel. Now, on the other hand, if our user is not interested anymore in uh, tile notifications, then we're going to provide a method closed channel in this same tile notifications class. And inside that closed channel method, what we're going to do again is verify if we have a channel open currently. And if we do have a channel open currently, then we just need to do some housekeeping um, just in order to make sure that we don't leave uh, unused resources behind. So what we're going to do on our push channel is unhook uh, those two events that we uh, currently are signed up for. So we are not interested in channel URI updated events anymore. And we're also not interested in error occurred events anymore. And then another thing we're going to do is actually close that channel. And after closing that channel, um, there is still memory allocated for it. So we're also going to dispose the channel. Um, so we're going to inform the um, garbage collector that we cleaned up our own resources. And then we're just going to set our get live tile notifications property that is part of our application settings to false. So the next thing we're going to do is add some functionality to our event handlers. And the first one we're going to work on is our error occurred event handler. And there are quite a few errors that can occur when you are dealing with push notifications. So depending on the error type, we're going to take some action. The first thing we're going to catch is actually if we have a channel open failed error. Well, in that situation, we know that our push notification channel to receive tile updates is unavailable. So we're just going to set our application setting get live tile notifications to false. Another type of error that we can have is a payload format error. And what that means is that our update to update a tile contains some errors and that update message is actually a little piece of XML. Well, in that situation, we need to reset up our channel because if we have a payload format error, our channel will be closed for us. So we're just going to reopen it again. And in a default situation for all other errors, we're simply going to close our channel. Now, if we have a valid channel, so if we opened our push channel and we get a valid channel back from the push notification service, well, it's going to inform us that by passing a URI, then again, we're simply going to show that URI in Visual Studio's output window. And the only reason we do that is to be able to pass that URI manually to an ASP.NET test application that we are running as part of this video. And if we have a valid channel open, then we're going to set our application setting get live tile notifications to true. Now, there's one more thing I need to do, and that is enable push notifications. And what we can do is make use of the settings page for that. And what I want to do is just create another toggle switch. So I'm going to copy that existing toggle switch there. And we're just going to create a copy on top of it. And that copy, we're going to rename that, of course. So the name of that toggle switch is going to be toggle live tiles. And uh, we're going to modify the row in which that uh, allow location toggle switch is located. Of course, I also need to change the content of that newly created 
toggle switch so we're going to change that into enable tile notifications but i'm also going to change the font a little bit because that text is a little too large so we're going to change it from 32 to 28 pixels and to just you know like keep a similar experience we're also going to do that for our enable location toggle switch then as i said in the grid in which those toggle switches are positioned we need to create a new row definition so now they will be nicely stacked on top of each other each having their own little row and now we can also add some code behind there because if we are enabling tile notifications what we need to do is make sure that we hook up to a push notification channel so first off we're going to check whether or not we currently have live tile notifications enabled because if that is true when we are navigating to our settings page then we're going to set the is checked property of our toggle switch to the current application setting get live tile notifications then if we are navigating away from our settings page then we're going to check whether or not push notifications are currently enabled and if there is a change with the previous situation so if our application settings are unequal to the current toggle switch is checked <laughs> setting well in that situation something changed we either now enabled or disabled push notifications so we're gonna change our notification channel accordingly and we're gonna make use of that little tile notifications class that we just created so we're going to create a new instance of that and then the first thing we need to do is assigning the get live tile notifications application setting to the current setting of the is check property of our toggle switch and now depending on whether the user wants live tiles enabled We're going to set up the tile notification channel or we're going to close the tile notification channel. So when we're navigating back from our settings page, we will set up the tile notification channel accordingly to that toggle switch. And now there's one more thing we need to do and that's back in our app.xaml.cs file. When we are starting the application, we need to figure out if live tile notifications were enabled the last time the application was running. Because if that's the case, we again need to set up that tile notifications channel. So we're just going to use our application settings here, and we're just going to verify whether or not the last time the application was running, the live tile notifications were enabled. And we're going to use our little tile notifications class again. So we're going to create a new instance of type tile notifications, and then we are going to set up our channel if um, the application setting indicated that we had town notifications enabled and that's all we need to do so i'm going to deploy to a 256 megabyte windows phone emulator and the reason to take that 256 megabyte emulator is that we did not have periodic agents available but we now still have a possibility to update our tiles so i'm going to change that toggle switch to enable tile notifications then we're going to go back to the main screen and what you can see now in the debug output window is a URI and that URI was just coming from the Microsoft push notification server and we're going to use that particular URI right now we're going to pass that to an ASP.NET application now that application cannot run inside Visual Studio 2010 Express for Windows Phone so what I need to do is start a new version of Visual Studio I'm going to use Visual Studio 2010 Ultimate for this particular case and I'm just going to start it with a already available ASP.NET application. Now in that application I have a little web form and I have a little thread and inside that worker thread I'm sending out town notifications. We're gonna do that a couple of times and this is the payload for the actual tile notification so what we're going to do is update the back content and we're also going to update the count that is visible on front of the tile and that's basically all we're going to do for a couple of times and uh, we specify that a couple of times when uh, we are running this uh, web application
So I'm just going to start the web application right now. And here's that little web form. Let me reposition that a little bit. And let's also make sure that we have our emulator visible as well. And what we're going to do right now is take that URI that we uh, got from our application, because that's the URI we're going to use to send tile updates to our application. And we're also going to pass a little string there, just maybe something like tile content pushed. And we're going to, for five times, we're just going to send out tile notifications. And so let's just wait until we see the backside. And let's go ahead there. And you see that, hey, our tiles backside is now updated. And then we're just going to wait until this particular test application is done. Inside the output window, you can now see the status of sending out those tile notifications. And on the front of our tile inside our 256 megabyte Windows Phone device emulator, you will see that count being updated on the front of the live tile accordingly. And it should update until five times. So now you can see that, hey, we can also update tiles on a 256 megabyte device by making use of the push notification service. Well, that's all for this episode of Even Tiles. I hope you enjoyed this video.